Hello, Caroline. So I'm doing a recording now for the Feldenkrais Guild newsletter. It will be an ATM with Caroline Scott and a short three-question interview with Caroline. So Caroline Scott is a practitioner, Feldenkrais practitioner, from based in Hebden Bridge in the north of England. Uh, welcome, Caroline. What brought you to Feldenkrais? Hi, well, um, dance really. So I trained in dance and after my dance training, I used to go to what were then called released based classes, uh, which were a bit different to my formal dance training. And I went to one particular class, um, which I later found out was beginning with Feldenkrais awareness through movement. So we'd lie on the floor and do what I found these really weird movements. I was lying down with my eyes closed Asked, being asked all these questions which felt really unusual for me because in my dance training it was about being upright copying the teacher looking in the mirror and getting it right whereas uh, in these classes I was asked all these strange questions and I have to say I found it quite perturbing but once I'd let go of that I found it really interesting and when I came up to standing and did what was the more kind of traditional dance phrase at the end I found myself moving in a really pleasurable and interesting way and I thought how can I do so little and um, and feel these differences so it was really intriguing to me and then a number of years later um, I was thinking about doing other somatic training uh, but I did some one-to-one -one Feldenkrais. I had some one-to-one -one Feldenkrais uh, lessons and I was hooked because in those lessons, I could really um, kind of look at some particular issues for me in terms of my own organisation. And this was the moment where I thought, ah, this is what I'm interested in. This is what I'd like to explore further. So it was that really. Brilliant, dance, through dance. What's your favourite thing about the Feldenkrais method? Oh my goodness, slowing down. I think I'm kind of quite a busy go, go, go person and the method continues to help me to slow down, to do a bit less and that sense of grounding. And I have to say that's very much a work in progress, but um, yeah, I, I think this is the important thing, but also this sense of continued curiosity um, and I'm finding that I'm dancing more these days and it really um, is so wonderful in my dancing and improvising to use these kind of tools that we have in the method, these principles, because it's just it's never ending. So playfulness, I think the playfulness for me is really keeping me going and curiosity. Wonderful. wonderful. Thank you. And can you give an example of a person you have worked with whose life has been transformed by the method? Um, gosh, that feels big. <laughs> and I'm uh, kind of often interested in small incremental changes for people. But um, I think the work I really uh, enjoy is working with children that I've worked with in the past. And there are a number of children for whom I've worked with who've had different neurological difficulties or brain injury um, at birth. And uh, what I've really appreciated is you know, the parents come and say, mm, they're kind of stuck, they're not able to move for themselves. And we're not sure, you know, we're feeling like they're kind of not doing what they should be doing. And we have some lessons and that sense of them finding their own potential. And I'll have an email saying, oh, I left so-and-so in the middle of the room and I went to go and do the dishes and I came back and she'd moved, you know, which is <laughs> a double bind, wonderful. isn't it? It's like wonderful. And yet, oh, now we have a whole new set of uh, things to explore in a way so I really enjoy I enjoy that but also um, I love working with adults also and there's a woman I've worked with recently who had hip surgery and she came because of the pain and the discomfort and kind of bringing the surgery into her kind of the surgery and what it is um, offered her in terms of renewing her sense of self and that's been a really wonderful exploration. And one of the things she said, so she comes about her hip, but actually it's her whole self that she gets interested in. And she said, you know, I know that this stuff is making a difference because when I get in the car, I'm having to change the mirrors on the car when I, you know, when I drive back home. So I think, you know, it's good for people to have kind of tangible, you know, things that they can tangibly feel the difference. Um, so yeah, they're just a couple, but. There are, there are lots of different ways that the work can help people, I think. That's amazing, just to change that family's life, right, who was stressed and worried about their child. I mean, that 
Perfect. So can you um, show me the ATM that you'd like to demonstrate today? Oh, well, I mean, okay. you're going to listen to the best to listen to it. But uh, anyway. OK, so get yourself comfortable. You can do this lesson sitting in a chair. You could do it on the floor. You could even do it lying on your back. So I'll let you kind of figure out right now what's best for you. And just take a moment just in sitting, just to feel or wherever you are, just to tune in with yourself for a moment, listen to your breathing and begin to take one of your hands towards your head. It doesn't matter which one. So just take one hand, we do this, don't we, to wash our hair or to, yeah, just to, we have to put cream on our face in the morning. So do, just do that on one side, feel how is that movement? What do you notice as you do that? Do you hold your breath? Try it out on the other side. So let your other hand come up and just notice what's the quality, the ease of that movement. And then how about both hands? There are times, aren't there, when we need to le reach both hands up towards our head and just feel how easy is that for you? Can you do it without holding your breath? Good, and then bring your hands down, just take a pause. And then put one hand on your chest, somewhere on your breastbone, and one hand on your belly, on your abdomen. And just let your hands settle to feel the front of yourself here. And do a little movement of slouching, of rounding your back and looking down towards the floor or down towards your abdomen. And then coming back home, keeping your hands softly touching your chest. And just notice what happens to your breastbone, the front of your chest. What happens to your abdomen as you look down and then as you come back home. See if your breathing can be free as you do this. And notice what happens as you look down, as you round your back, just feel that sense of your chest softening. And as you come back up, you could even imagine someone's hands on your back. What about your ribs in the back? You have a sense of that. And then come back home, bring your hands down, take a pause. So these places in our chest, we don't often think of them in terms of the functioning of our hands and arms. But I just wonder from this soft touch, what do you sense now of your breathing, of the feeling of the shape of yourself here? Your ribs winging round from your breastbone in the front to your spine in the back. Take your right hand and reach it over to your left shoulder very softly. And take your left hand on your right elbow. So you're really cradling your right elbow in your hand. And just begin to take that elbow a little bit up and a little bit down. Really nice and soft. Just check that your right hand is resting softly on your shoulder. And just notice your chest as you do this. What do you notice in your shoulder blade on that right side? If it feels a little bit jumpy, could you search it for it to get a little smoother? That's it. And then could you begin to follow the movement of your elbow with your head and eyes? So you could look down a bit as your elbow goes down. You could look up a bit as your elbow comes a little higher. And really let yourself follow your elbow. So even if your eyes are closed, just let your eyes follow. That's it. Very softly. And just notice what's happening in your chest as you do that. You may even feel under your base of support. If you're sitting, do you feel a little bit of rocking on your sitting bones? As you go one way, as you go the other way. Come back to the middle. Where is the middle? Your elbow is sort of at shoulder height. And go a little bit to one side and a little bit to the other side. So you're just turning a little bit. And again, let your head and eyes be in line with your elbow. Just check that you're not holding your breath. Yeah, maybe a little smile helps. We don't want to be too serious, do we? 
in our attending to ourselves. Good, come back, oh, slowly, slowly, bring that arm down, let it come down gently and take a rest. Yeah, just notice as you rest, what do you sense of your right arm and your shoulder? Maybe yeah. even... <laughs> more relaxed. Aha, uh -huh, you feel it dropping a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just notice into your neck and jaw. Good. Softly bring your other hand. So bring your left hand across your chest. Put it on your right shoulder. Just very softly taking a hold of that left elbow with your right hand and begin that exploration again of taking your elbow a little bit up and down and it's probably going to be different on this side so be prepared for that how can you be gentle with yourself that's it just notice the direction that your elbow wants to move through space and are there any little glitches is it jumpy or juddery so you're just looking always to iron out any of that just find the smoothness. And then spread your attention so you can notice not only your arm and your shoulder, but what's happening in your chest. Let your head and eyes now follow your elbow. So as you include your elbow, sorry, include the your head and eyes following your elbow, what's different for you? That's it. And then come back home where where is kind of the middle more or less of this range and take your elbow a little bit to one side and the other so you'll begin a little motion of turning so everything's kind of moving as a piece isn't it your head follows your elbow but what's happening through your spine now as you do that lower down in your pelvis so only go as far as feels really easy and really just check that your head and eyes and, and your chin are really in line with your elbow. They don't go ahead. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Nice. And I guess we're just being specific, aren't we, about what we're asking for. And maybe that moves you, means you go slower or in a smaller range. Nice. Okay, gently bring that arm down. Take a rest. Just check in with your breathing for a moment. So it's great, isn't it? We don't have to do a lot and we feel some changes. So just feel for a moment the balance between your two shoulders. How are they resting now? Let's just do a little piece more. So take your right hand over to your left shoulder again. Take a hold of your right elbow. And this time, could you rest your head or your chin in your... Um, elbow as it were so go gently with this how could you rest your head your hand still rests on your shoulder yeah that's your right hand and very gently take your elbow a little bit up and a little bit down so you're moving your head and your arm like a parcel it's one piece that's it and you're looking for your head to really be supported yeah, so you might have to play with that. How can you do the movement? So your left hand is gently nudging your right elbow a little bit towards the ceiling, a little bit towards the floor, and your head's getting a ride. That's it. Feel your breathing and what happens in your chest now. If you feel comfortable, you could do a little bit of the left and right again. Letting your head really rest. Do you need a rest, Alex? No, I'm okay. If you're okay. Okay, softly, softly bring your head back up. Bring your arm down. Take a pause. And just notice the space across the front of your chest now. Gently bring your other arm across, so bring your left arm across, touch your right shoulder. Take a hold of your elbow again. How do you let your head rest in your left arm? So very softly. If it's easier for you to rest your chin, this could be an option. So what would you like to do? Would you like to go up and down first or side to side? It's your choice. 
So go with where you feel curious on this side. And can you really sense what's happening in your chest, in your spine? As your elbow comes down, can you feel your back rounding a bit? As your elbow goes up, can you feel yourself lengthening a bit? Maybe you feel your pelvis if you're sitting against the chair base. And then why not be a bit creative? You could do a little circle with this elbow. Or you could draw the initials of your name with your elbow. But how do you still search for quality? That's it. Really softly. Just check that the hand that's holding your elbow is soft. There you go. Yeah. Okie dokie. Great, bring everything down, bring your arm down and take a rest. Ah, how heavy do your arms feel right now? What do you notice? They're heavy, at least they're, they've evened out now. They're both relaxed, yeah, thank you. Okay. And then just go back to the first movement of reaching one hand towards your head. Just give yourself time to feel that. How does it go? You feel like, and then the other hand, do you feel that you'd be more able to yeah. wash your hair a little easier? It's these simple things, isn't it, in life that we need help with. So and maybe bringing both hands towards your head. Great. So how can we include more of ourselves in an easy way? That was so wonderful. Is there oh, anything else? Yeah. No, that's fine. I can just hear my cat meowing at the door. It must be time to end. Okay, thank you so much. I wish you could do that for me every every Friday, for all of us, every Friday, Caroline. You, you <laughs> thank you. you the great start to the day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.